Welcome back, BC Couch students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and I am joined by my favorite sixth period class this year, my BC kids. How about a cheer? And they're just as excited as my other ones. Maybe that was the best one yet. But we are kind of doing a little live broadcast today with several of the examples from our fictitious topic 615, all about trig integrals. This particular example, a little bit different. We're going to be looking at an example that only features a tangent word with an even exponent. So go team. Let's figure this guy out. And here's our example. Integrate tangent to the fourth. And that we do have boundaries, 0 to pi over 4. That doesn't have a lot to do with our procedure. We just have a little bit of work to do at the end to evaluate that. So let's talk about this tangent to the fourth. What are we going to do? We don't have the evil odd exponents anymore like we had in the previous examples. So what you're going to want to do with this guy, anytime that you have a fourth power, heaven forbid, a sixth power, eighth power, probably not going to happen, too much algebra involved, you're going to want to split that apart into two separate second powers, which begs the question, why? Right? A lot of the things that we do in mathematics needs motivation, right? Sometimes steps don't make sense because we don't understand what motivates them. What motivates this is the fact that we have some special trig identities. And if you haven't figured it out by now, this topic is chock full of Pythagorean trigonometric identities. And the one that we use quite often here is the fact that 1 plus tangent squared of x is equal to secant squared of x. All right, so if we're using that identity, how's this going to work for us? Well, we're going to take one of these tangent squareds, I'll use the first one, and I'm going to rewrite it as, now be careful, you have to swing that one over to the right, and so we're going to get secant squared of x minus one here. And I'm going to keep that tangent squared x in the problem. Okay, now, this is a little different, isn't it? Obviously, we don't have the luxury anymore of being able to peel away a tan and peel away a secant and have a secant tangent as our du. The structure of this integrand just doesn't allow for that, even though it has a secant and a tangent in it. So what we're going to do with this is start to think about what is it that we can integrate and what is it that we cannot integrate as far as trig words raised to powers are. And the thing that I always want my students to be on, on, on their top of their game here is that secant squared is your friend. Secant squared integrates really nicely. In fact, secant squared integrates to be tangent, right, plus c, because the derivative of tangent is secant squared. On the other hand, tangent squared, that does not integrate nicely, right? I'm going to put a big like what in front of that, because a lot of times a student might want to say the integral of tangent squared is secant. Right, kind of thinking that these are like a two-way street here, but it's not because the derivative of secant is not tangent squared. So this is what we want to try to avoid, right? If you see this, you want to avoid it. In other words, rewrite it to look like something else. Okay, so meanwhile, back at the problem, let's go ahead and distribute our tangent squared. Now, it may not be real clear why we do that. If you're able to think a step ahead, it might start to become clear. But by the time we multiply them and put them together, I'm hoping that some kind of uh, uh, bells go off in our head and we start to see, oh, well, that's why we did that. So we have secant squared tangent squared x, uh, secant squared x tangent squared x minus tangent squared of x dx. Now, if you look at this first integral, secant squared times tangent squared, just focus on him by himself. Is that an easy integral to evaluate? 
maybe a u substitution works like letting u be tangent and the derivative of tangent is secant squared so all of this is is just asking us to integrate u to the second power this is a pretty easy one this could be a problem that you could see from a b class but the tangent squared here we've already talked about is what we want to avoid Man, I wish this tangent squared was a secant squared instead, right? Do you see what we're going to do about that? We use this property one more time. That property gets used twice in this kind of setup. All right, so what we'll do is get the ball rolling there, integrate from 0 to pi over 4. I'm going to still keep secant squared, tangent squared, sitting and waiting because it knows what to do. It's like, I'm ready to integrate. Come on. Come on, tangent squared over there. Get your act together. So the tangent squared is going to be secant squared minus 1. Now that is a quantity. So I am going to go ahead and distribute. Now this kind of bothers me a little bit, but I, I want to make sure that everyone is aware that I'm not saying that tan squared is secant squared plus 1. I'm saying negative tangent squared is negative secant squared plus 1. Right, there's a difference. I'm calling tangent squared, secant squared minus one, but I'm distributing that minus so I don't have extra parentheses. Now, if I'm not mistaken, every piece of this can be integrated. The hardest one is probably this first piece, and I don't mind writing this out, right? Letting u be tan, letting du be secant squared. You probably by this time don't need to write that, but if you do, there it is. And so we're going to integrate u squared, which gives us temporarily u cubed over 3. But I'm going to go ahead and back substitute so that we can get this thing completely finished. So this would be tangent to the third power of x over 3. Hopefully that makes sense. That's what secant squared times tangent squared integrates to be. Meanwhile, Antiderivative of secant squared is just tangent. Antiderivative of 1 with respect to x is x. And now all of this is in terms of x. We basically just evaluate it from pi over 4 down to 0. And let's see what we get. Tangent of pi over 4. Does everybody know what the tangent of pi over 4, right? Whether you, oh my gosh, my, my face, my face is behind all this work. That's not good. I, you know, actually, I look a little bit better. I look a little better there, but I'll move me. So pi over 4, uh, what is that? If you do the finger thing, I mean, that, that certainly works. Uh, I think it's also pretty easy just to think about 45 degrees is your pi over 4 angle. And I think this is your typical trig ratios all simplified, right? Your, your special triangle ratios. So tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Tangent of 45 degrees is 1. So if you take that 1 and cube it, guess what? You still have 1. And then you're going to take the tangent of pi over 4, which is going to give us 1 again. And then you're going to add pi over 4 right after we plug pi over 4 in for that x and then i think if we plug 0 in everything is going to disappear and we just have a 0 and the only thing left to do is combine these two guys right here we get negative 2 thirds plus pi over 4 and that is your answer certainly welcome you to take your graphing calculator it doesn't have to be a cast calculator because this is a definite integral, punch that in there, see if it gives you the same thing or it's definitely decimal equivalent, and I'm sure it will. Anyway, I hope this helps out. We're kind of at the end of the video series on trig integrals. We just have a couple of more that we're going to look at that take a few extra cases into consideration. But in the meantime, keep studying, and we'll see you next time.